Hello, everyone. This is Jinju Wang. Today, I want to show you how to set up the working environment for land use trade-off models, aka Luto model. Luto model require a great resource to run the model. It usually requires a lot of memories, like 50 gigabytes to 200 gigabytes, and it also requires multi-CPU cores, usually 30 to 50 cores to run the model. So it's very important to set up the environment that is can successfully make local run on the environment. So today I'm going to show you three steps before that, aka installing the necessary softwares, clone Luto code from GitHub, and create a Python environment for Luto. First, we need to create a Linux system for Luto. Let's get to the start menu and the search store. And we open Microsoft Store. Here in the search bar, we search Ubuntu. Sorry for the misspelling. Now you can see different versions of Ubuntu. Some show install, some show download. Here I'm already installed the Ubuntu 2022, so I will hit open. When I hit open, a terminal gonna pump out. This terminal gonna automatically install a Linux system on top of your Windows system. I'm gonna explain why we need to use Linux system because in the future time, Luto gonna require some script. While those scripts can only be run on a Linux system, that's why we choose to run a Linux system. Uh, after a while, here we need to specify a name. And after a while, we need to give it a password. We need to type in two times of the password. OK. Now, when you see this line of uh, text, it means that uh, the Linux, Linux system is automatically installed. The question could be, will Luto be running in a Windows system? The answer is yes. But when we run Luto on Windows system, we can only run one scenario every time. But if we run Luto on a Linux system, we can run multiple scenarios on the same time. That is the key why we want to use a Linux system. Now that we have a Linux system installed, we need to install another software, which is Mobile Xterm so that we can have more interactivity with the Linux system. Let's just search the mobile extern and navigate it to the download link. Hit this free download link and hit this install version of mobile extern. After a while, it should download the software to our desktop. Now let's open the folder of this downloaded file and extract to the nearby directory and the double click this installer and the hit next to the end because I've already installed it so it shows remove but in your installation you can click next all the way to the end and then hit finish now we should have a mobile extern in our desktop let's double click this mobile extern it will uh, show this interface because I've already linked some server to my OBX term, so it shows three items. Now let me show you how to connect to Windows Subsystem Linux. Here, click this session button and choose the last WSL button. In this distribution, we need to choose the one that is matches our uh, Windows Store. In Windows Store, we choose the Ubuntu 2022, 20, so we hit this choice. We type in the name we specified in the installation process and let's hit OK. After a few seconds, Windows should boot up a sub Linux system. Looks like this. Now let me explain why we want to choose such an interface. Because, for example, we want to make a new directory, make a new folder. In Linux, we should type some command, make dir, 
that is command to make a new directory. Let's give it a name, test. Here in the left explorer panel, we can hit refresh folder to refresh the current folder. Now we can see, yes, we successfully made a new directory. But mobile XTerm provide another solution. We can just hit the create new directory button and give it a name, test2, and hit OK. It will also create a new folder named test2. Yes, that is the advantage of using a mobile XTerm. It allows us to have a visual to inspect all the files. We can rename the files, we can delete the files. That is very convenient for those who are only familiar with the operations in the Windows system. What's even better is, for example, the Spash RC file. It is a very important file in Linux system. We can right click and open with default editor. We can make change to it, add some new lines. And when we hit Ctrl I, Ctrl S, which means save, we can save the, our change back to the remote server. This is very convenient rather than using a nano or Veeam. For example, I can use Veeam and use Veeam to edit the bash RC file. Now you can see this block screen, that is the way we do editing in Linux system, which is a bit intimidating. At last, let's install the VS Code. This is a very popular Python editor or any language editor. Let's double click the Chrome and uh, type in VS Code, which will lead us to this download link. We click the download link and we download the version of Windows. After a while, this should be download a new file. Let's open this file and it will lead us to the installation interface. Here, let's click accept the agreement and uh, hit next all the way down to the bottom. Uh, because I've already installed VS Code, so I will hit uh, cancel here. At last, when finishing installing the VS Code, we should say this welcome page. And that means we have successfully installed VS Code. Now we can connect VS Code to the Linux system. We can click this little icon and choose connect to WSL. After a refreshing, it will connect to the WSL. We can confirm by observing this uh, name. It says WSL Ubuntu 22.04. Okay, this is the content for this tutorial. We installed all the necessary software and the platform for running a Luto. Next time we will clone Luto from GitHub and create a Python environment.